It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this video, we're going to continue our journey in Unity Learn Create with Code Player Control. In the previous video, we completed 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. In this video, we're going to wrap it up with 1.4, step into the driver's seat. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. In this lesson, we need to hit the road again to gain control of the vehicle. In order to do so, we need to detect when the player is pressing the arrow keys, then accelerate and turn the vehicle based on that input. Using new methods, vectors, and variables, you will allow the vehicle to move forward or backwards and turn left to right. Let's watch the introduction. The vehicle in our prototype is currently a very low end, very dangerous self-driving car. You click run and the car rockets off on its own, crashing into every obstacle along the way. Not necessarily the kind of car you'd want to be a passenger in. So it's about time we let the player step into the driver's seat and take the wheel. By the end of this lesson, the player will be able to control the acceleration and direction of the vehicle using the arrow keys on the keyboard. The vehicle should move forward when the up arrow key is pressed and backwards when the down arrow key is pressed. Luckily, Unity has an entire input system set up to help us do exactly that. When you press the up arrow, you get an input value of positive one and when you press the down arrow, you get an input value of negative one. So let's say we set the vehicle speed to 10. All you have to do is multiply that speed by the input value and you're good to go. When the player presses the up arrow, it'll multiply 10 by positive one, giving you positive 10, moving that vehicle in the positive forward direction. But if they press the down arrow, it'll multiply 10 by negative one, giving you negative 10, moving the vehicle in the negative backward direction. Then you can basically use the same type of system to rotate the vehicle. You multiply the rotation by a positive value if they press the right arrow, turning the vehicle right, and multiply by a negative value if they press the left arrow, turning the vehicle left. Just some simple multiplication and you've got full control of this vehicle. So to make all that happen, I'll see you in Unity. All right, let's mark this step as complete. Allow the vehicle to move left and right. Until now, the vehicle has only been able to move straight forward along the road. We need to be able to move left and right to avoid the obstacles. Again, make sure you watch this video for more details. <clears throat> At the top of the player control script, add a public float turn speed variable. So we're going to come back over here. This is follow the player. We want to be player control. Public float turn speed. In the update method, Add transform.translate vector 3.write times time.delta time times turn speed. So it used to be we're going to add this transform.translate. We're just going to simply copy this. So in here, forward. Right. So we're going to say transform dot translate. And if we come back here, I bring this down, scroll down so I can see it. Scroll down a little bit more. I'm doing transform vector three dot right. Times time dot delta time times turn speed and a semicolon. T 
turn right every second. So let's see, run your game and use a turn speed variable slider to move the vehicle left and right. So again, I need to put that underneath though. You can see forward and right. So let's copy this and let's put this at the bottom. So let's do save and let's run it. Now when I save it, look at this over here, the vehicle, it has a turn speed. So I can drag it up and drag it down. Let's put it back to zero. So you just mouse over this until you see this little arrow, but let's press play. Now look, I can, and I'm still falling, but if I drag it this way, drag it this way, let's slow the speed down so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna make it 10. Let's press play. Now I'm gonna drag this way and drag this way. And you can see that turn speed variable works. All right, let's mark step as complete. Base left right movement on input. Currently we can only control the vehicle left and right movement in the inspector. We need to grant some power to the player and allow them to control the movement for themselves. In the player control script, add a new public float horizontal input variable. So at the very top, public float horizontal input. And update, assign, I'm going to scroll down so I can see that. Inside of update, so assign my horizontal. So down here, I'm going to do horizontal input is equal to input that get axis horizontal with my semicolon. So this is getting, you know, let's double check, I have everything horizontal, horizontal. Test and see it in the inspector. Let's do file save. I'm pressing my keys. stop. Add the horizontal input variable to the left right translate method to gain control of your vehicle. In the inspector, set the turn speed and edit the speed variables to tweak the feel. So again here you can see we were getting that access but now times turn speed times the horizontal input. So I'm going to scroll this down so I can make sure that I have the exact same thing times turn speed times the horizontal input. Make sure I file save it. And let's test this. So now I'm, I'm going to use my left and right arrows. So let's make the turn speed like five. Let's see how that works. Using my, oh, see I have my, and I can, that looks pretty decent. Five is pretty good. I can, I'm using my arrow keys and I'm able to, five at that speed looks pretty good. And there we go. So let's mark this step as complete. 
Take control of the vehicle speed. We've allowed the player to control the steering wheel, but we also want them to control the gas pedal and brake. Declare a new public forward input variable. Update the forward input to get the vertical axis. So come back over here. This is turning left and right using keyboard. I'm going to say public float forward input. And this is drive faster or slower. Or let's say go forward or backward using keyboard arrows up slash down. And this is the speed to turn left. All right, down here, I'm going to say forward input is equal to input, which is the keyboard dot get axis slash vertical. This is my keyboard up down keys. Add the forward input variable to the forward dot translate method, then test. So you can see I'm adding that to this vector 3.forward times time.delta time times speed times forward input. So up here, times forward input. Let's test this. So again, I need to do file save. Come here, press play. You can see it's not doing anything. It's going left, it's going right. If I go up, I can go back. So now this is this is me pressing up on the keyboard, this is me pressing back, this is me pressing left, this is me pressing right. So if I want to drive, I can press both. And maybe I want to increase my speed. And let's make the speed like 20. So, I can, so let's take this off. Put back on my vehicle. I'm going to make the speed 20. Now let's press play. So you can see it up, back, left, right. Now it does look like I can push these around, but it's not really turning. So you can see it's just like moving side to side. But cars don't really turn straight like this. So we'll work on that in a bit. But that is working. Let's press mark step as complete. Make the vehicle rotate instead of slide. There's something weird about the vehicle's movement. It slides left to right instead of turning. Let's allow the vehicle to turn like a real car. In the update, in update, call transform.rotate vector3.up horizontal input then test. So I'm gonna scroll this down so I can see. Do a comment. Allow car to rotate. So we're saying transform dot rotate, and I'm saying vector three dot up, comma horizontal input, and we're gonna save this, and then test it. So, so you can see, look at how it, now it's allowing the turn. Now it looks a little weird, it's like not, so we have to delete something, but you can see it looks like it's turning now. Come back over here. Delete the line of code that translates right, then test. So. It wants us to delete this line of code here. Then test. Okay. So let's test that. File save. Come back over here. Let's test it. So you can see now it looks more smooth. All right. 
add turn speed times time dot delta time then test. So again in my rotate time turn speed times horizontal input times time dot delta time. Turn speed times time dot delta time. I do file save and test it again. And there you go. I need to probably update my turn speed. I made my turn speed 20. My turn speed should be 5. My speed should be 20. Let's test that again. Actually, my turn speed, I like that 20. Let's make that 20. Let's make the speed 50. These two numbers. All right. Mark step is complete. Clean your code in the hierarchy. We've added lots of new stuff in this lesson before moving on. And to be more professional, we need to clean our scripts and hierarchy to make them, to make them more organized. In the hierarchy, right click, create empty, and rename it obstacles. Then drag all the obstacles into it. So over here, right click, create empty. I'm going to call it obstacles. I click on the first one, select the last one. I'm going to drag that into here. Those are all my obstacles. Initialize variables with values in player controller, then make all of the variables private except for the player. So we're not going to make these public anymore. We're going to change them to private. So float will be 20. Actually, I'm going to scroll down so we can see these and pull this up a little bit. So over here, changing this to private float speed is equal to 20. I'm changing this to private turn speed is equal to 45.0F. Changing this to private float horizontal input and I'm changing this to private float forward input. Initialize the variables in player controller, then make them all private. We've done that. Use this to add comments to each section of code. You can see they have some of the comments, comments here. I've already commented mine, but we can actually Allow the car to rotate, and they put this instead. Rotates the car based on horizontal input, which is your keyboard, left, right arrows. And they put this one moves the car forward based on vertical input which is the keyboard up slash down arrows and we can get actually get rid of this as well I'll just leave it there. And we can mark this step as complete. So let's just save this since we made some changes. Test it one last time. And what you can see also here is now player control does not have those variables that we made. These variables over here because these are private. If they're public, they'll show up in Unity. If they're private, they will not show up over here. 
So all of our variables, speed, turn speed, horizontal input, and forward input is no longer showing up. Let's play to make sure that this is working. So you can see it is, whoa. And you can see I can back up. Still hit them. And I can come backwards and flip off. All right. All right, lesson recap. We finished off all of the functionality of our game now, so our player has full control over this vehicle. When we press the up arrow key, the vehicle drives forward. If we press the right arrow key, we turn right. If we press the left arrow key, we turn left. We can even press the down arrow key to go in reverse. So now we have a lot of amazing control. We learned a little bit about empty game objects so that we can use it to keep our projects organized like in our environment game object, storing all of our different environment assets or our obstacle game object, keeping track of all of our different obstacles in our scene. We also learned all about using the input manager to get input from our player. In this case, when they press the up or down arrow key or the left or right arrow key using our forward input and horizontal input. And then we learned about a new method that we could use. In this case, our transform.rotate method so that we can actually rotate the vehicle against a certain axis instead of just translating the vehicle, which looked really weird. Overall, We've come a long way down this road, starting from absolutely nothing to creating our very first Unity project. We even reorganized our window. We added some color so we can see when we're playing our game. We created our very first game objects and assets and added them to the scene. We learned all about scripting. We even made two scripts and wrote our first lines of code to be able to program this vehicle and drive down the road. So, with that, you should feel super proud of yourselves for making it all the way to the end of the road. And we'll see you in the next project. This mark step as complete. The next project is going to be the challenge that you will complete on your own. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save it and then turn it into your teacher.